Hello, everyone. Welcome to OmniTalk Retail. This is Ann Mazinga. And I'm Chris Walton. And we are here live from the Vision Group booth, number 1663, at Grocery Shop 2025. And we have a wonderful guest for you today. We have the privilege of talking to the EVP and Chief Digital Officer at Loblaw, Lauren Steinberg. Lauren, welcome to the <laughs> Thank show. You. Thanks for having me. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's great to finally meet you. I'm excited about this. Yeah. So, so tell, us about, tell us about yourself, your background. We always like first guests to tell us about themselves, you know, how they got into retail, what they've done in retail, and also about Loblaw, too, for maybe those in the U.S. that maybe aren't as familiar mm -hmm. with them up north. Yeah. Well, first of all, retail is in my blood. Is it? How yeah. far back? <laughs> We're taught over 100 years. Really? Uh, my great grandmother started what once, at one point, was uh, one of the largest grocers in Canada. What? Uh, yeah, we. Wow. it was called Steinberg's. It was based in Quebec, which is where I'm from, okay. Montre in Montreal, for those that know. Uh, and yeah, my grandfather and his brothers built it into like a, you know, a billion dollar, multi billion dollar grocery business. Eventually, it was dissolved in like the 90s, and Loblaw, where I now work, uh, took on about 33.3% of it. Uh, and actually, Loblaw still owns the IP for Steinberg's today, which is super cool. I recently found that out. So groceries wow. in my blood, literally. Um, but no, I've been, I love retail. I think I've always been either adjacent or directly in it. I started my career really building websites, designing and building websites. I parlayed that into managing websites, driving demand to those websites, so really e-commerce marketing. Okay. And then eventually just went all in, started you know building and growing uh, e-commerce businesses. Over the last 12 years I've been doing that, or 13 years I've been doing that at Loblaw. Uh, where we do online grocery is the largest share of our business, okay. about two and a half billion. Uh, we run online beauty, uh, apparel, pharmacy, prescription, you name it. We're building you know, the, the digital platforms for Canada's largest loyalty program, PC Optum. So uh, I'm like a little of everything. I do nothing really, really great. I do a little of everything uh, well enough to really be one of the, the, the biggest and the best in Canada. Enough to be dangerous. Yes. Enough to be dangerous. And exactly. how many provinces across Canada is Loblaw? Loblaw is everywhere. We're, okay. in, we're the largest national grocer. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, re we've got 2,400 retail locations. 2,400, okay. Uh, and that's, if you know Canada, I mean, that's a lot. Yes. Um, we're about 10 minutes from 90% of Canadians is what we say. Um, and wow. uh, yeah, we're kind of serving every need. We're, we've got 17 different grocery banners. So Loblaws, Zeris, Fortino, Superstore, No Frills, that's which right. is our hard discount banner. So people know us in different ways. Okay. Um, but the unifier would be PC Optimum, our loyalty program, and okay. our PC control brand products that show up in every one of our stores. Okay. Yeah. Well, I imagine because groceries in your blood, that's how you manage to oversee everything that's under <laughs> no, your that's portfolio, just that you have so much passion <laughs> for it and yeah. family history. But how would you say that you break up your time in, mm -hmm. you know, in 2025? Like, where are your key areas mm -hmm. of focus? So, I, like we said, I, I manage kind of, I look at it as a Venn diagram. Do you? Uh, okay. Yeah, I love, love a good Venn, Venn diagram. Diagrams. If you had yes. a whiteboard here, I'd be, I'd be doodling it. Uh, Digital, which is encompassing e-commerce, mm -hmm. retail media, and loyalty. And if you look at the three, mm -hmm. a lot of the times in organizations like ours, you know, they bundle things together because of a leader or a time and a place. Right. This is very strategic in nature. E-commerce needs retail media to be profitable. Our retail media business needs loyalty for the data around mm -hmm. targeting and, 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 you know, precision targeting and measurement. And then loyalty really needs digital uh, more and more because actually a digitally engaged loyalty member spends 2x stays 3x longer uh, and they're just far more sticky in your ecosystem and so the three of those combined allows me to kind of spend my time in any which one but also drive meaningful value for the other yeah i would say i i spend the least amount of my time these days on e-commerce because i've got some incredible uh leader uh leaders now kind of you know scale we've scaled significantly right uh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing, we've got some pretty solid infrastructure. Uh, and so I probably spend the most amount of my time on retail media, on retail media? just because I haven't replaced the person who left two years ago when <laughs> I inherited it. Uh, and you know, I, I think it's also so new to me. I've always, you know, I've always done e-commerce. I've always built digital platforms. I've always, you know, been participating in loyalty. We built that loyalty platform when I was just running digital. Uh, so very involved there. Retail media is like such an emerging new space. I know in some cases people think it's mature. 
It's not. I think yeah. it's rapidly changing. Uh, and yeah, I'm like not a salesperson. I've never done that kind of stuff. So <laughs> I'm kind of a fish out of water there, but I love it. Uh, and I love taking what I can do with the rest of my portfolio, like using loyalty for that stuff, building, you know, great digital like ad products yeah. with our digital team for, you know, retail media. So right. Super cool. Well, yeah. so let's, let's let's talk about retail media then. Okay. So what 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 do you see as the value prop? Because you said it's early, and we agree with that hundred yeah. percent. What is the value proposition of retail media at Loblaw, and how do you see it evolving, and how do you plan to differentiate it in the long term? I mean, it's not dissimilar from you know the value prop elsewhere. If we're really just trying to connect brands with customers in new and interesting ways while not disrupting the core retail experience rather enhancing it right right and i think i mean we're built like the growth of these cpgs is growth for us mm -hmm. right and so that is really important to us i think our focus right now is building high performing ad products across our ecosystem and unlocking measurement just giving marketers and and cpgs certainty oh. mm -hmm. i'm a, i told you i think i mentioned like i did you know online marketing very early yes. on so i'm i've always been lower funnel marketing i've always been or maybe even to all funnel but really focused on performance every dollar you know matters and i i, I appreciate that that's the pain that a lot of these cpgs go through uh and so for us it really is just you using kind of the the force of our store network and our di like we have 40 40 almost 45 percent online grocery market share in canada where i think the rest of our business is about 30 35 mm -hmm. so we over index and so we have you know if you're growing in e-commerce with us you're growing your total share that's where you want to be be growing right uh, and so i think that you know that's really our focus is just better performing ad products and getting closer to the to points of decision well, with 2,400 stores, though, there's yeah. still this need to connect the e-commerce and what you're doing in store Definitely. for your consumers using your Venn diagram. How <laughs> do you how do you think about kind of the next several years here of really that that integration and how does retail media play into that? Mm -hmm. How does personalization for your loyalty consumers mm -hmm. play into that? Like, what are what are some of those strategic guideposts for you for for integrating in store and digital? I mean, I think customers are finding ways to do it on their own. And oh, so interesting. For, right? I think for us, it's really okay. like just about Very making approach. that easier for them. Like I saw a customer taking a photo of one of our aisles and asking ChatGPT, where is this thing yeah. right, that they couldn't find? Yeah. Like that's the level of technology that we're, you know, I don't want to say competing against, but that we're dealing with that customers are getting used to. And so yeah. it's like, how do you bring that intelligence into your experiences and then augment that with coupons mm -hmm. and product boosting and you know more more like better uh, you know richer uh, product details and you know so on and so forth. So I think for us, like a, I want to bring you know better utility okay. in our digital apps yep. into our stores. Okay. No question about it. I think that's a great way to funnel demand into your e-commerce proposition. And mm -hmm. once you do that, you've got you know a stickier customer. Um, and then two, I think it's you know we've got to continue to invest in our digital experience like i was talking on stage earlier about search like search is for me keeps me up at night yeah wakes me up in the There's morning excited there right now. No, i mean <laughs> you know uh, almost over 45 percent of uh add to carts on online grocery happen through our search uh so it's meaningful you make a small improvement there that's big you know yes. big big uh big change for us and i think you know Answer engines like ChatGPT and Perplexity, though, they're changing expectations. So you, mm -hmm. you need more semantic, more conversational. Uh, and they're also, you know, more commerce is going to happen mm -hmm. in those spaces. So how are you showing up there? How are you differentiating between yourself and those guys? Like I was saying earlier, like, you know, you'll Google your symptoms, but you're still going to go to a doctor. Yes. And so like each thing has value. Each thing has, you know, uh, purpose. How do we make sure that we've got, we're hanging on to our value proposition really tightly uh, and and you know let those guys do what they're good at so Laura I'm curious too like I don't want to read between the lines too much but like how are, how do you how do you think about some of the, the I don't want to call them new because they're not really new but some of the the in-store media channels that are developing more quickly in some retailers than others so like digital screens in-store audio how do you mm -hmm. play do you how do you think about those like do you think love them. you love them i we yeah we don't okay. have enough of them we're you gonna have soon have them. so i think okay in europe and maybe i don't know about the states so much but yeah. in in europe they started in store 
Okay. And they've slowly kind of broadened their spectrum to DSPs and, you know, 3P, like, marketing. Okay. Uh, we did the opposite. I think the first step that we made in Retail Media was we acquired a DSP, at, uh, now, now called Media Isle, uh, you know, similar to the Trade Desk, where we kind of run a lot of our business. Of course, we did, you know, uh, RMP, so, like, sponsored search on our sites mm -hmm. and whatnot. And now we're starting to get into stores. That is where 90% of our transactions are happening. That is where you're making that final, final decision. decision. Maybe not every decision, but that final decision. And so I think pairing it with, obviously, Upper Funnel or, you know, uh, 1P and 3 off out outside of store marketing is, is helpful. We've got about a thousand uh, screens in our stores today. They're largely on the peripheral. So okay. you see them on your way okay. in, but you don't see them again until you're on your way out. Okay. Uh, and we're going to be changing that. We're going to be long. We're probably going to more than 10 X that number. And the difference is it's not more on the periphery. We're going to have end caps. We're going to have in aisle and that's going to, you know, have a lot of uh, there's gonna have there's gonna be a lot of intelligence within those. I think that's what marketers want. They just want more options. And the reality is, like what I've learned from retail media, which is not dissimilar from kind of the early experience of building e-commerce products for everyone. Yes. To serve everyone is hard. Like we're a grocer, you serve everyone. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, who's your core customer? Well, it's like everyone is our core customer. Yes. How do you prioritize? How do you build for that? Right. It's not different for retail media. It's right. really, really hard because what I don't want to say any like CPG names, but like, right. but what this guy wants <laughs> is different from what this person <laughs> wants. And it's and what you know what what how they how one measures success is different from how another does. Right. And so I think you do need to diversify, mm -hmm. but not in a way that overcomplicates or you're chasing too many things. You have to find what the, you know, what you, you have to have a lot of conviction. What mm -hmm. do you think will really work? Mm -hmm. We've seen early indicators that in-store performs for us when paired with uh, with other types of advertisements, both so our own and others. And so it's too. like, cool, like let's find the right partner. Let's do that really well. We don't have to build everything, which we do a lot. We, you know, we're look, we're, we've, we found a partner to help us scale in-store media. We've got radio, uh, in-store audio. One of the cool things that we did early on was sync screens and audio together nice. which i love like nice. little things nice. like that you know so uh love yeah it. i think there's like and uh, you don't really need to like buy these uh, you know i don't know i'm looking at a bunch of vendors so i don't want to say you don't need to buy software for it we're lucky that we you know we've built a lot of infrastructure that we have a lot mm. of extensibility um but i think you know that no experiment is wasted i think that's kind of our mentality right, okay yeah. cool um, all right, so let's get you out of here on this then. So we're at Grocery Shop. It's a tech conference. You just alluded to some yeah, tech. Yeah. Um, what technologies really get you excited about as you think to the future, as you try to think about your job, all your many hats in the Venn diagram? Which ones are you most excited about? I mean, obviously, I'm going to say AI. Any, any particular type? I mean, I think Agentic, which we've Agentic. kind of been doing for some time. I think conversational for search. I know, like okay. I said, search is so important to us. Um, but I think AI for personalization, a lot, there's a little bit of everything. So for example, our personalization efforts, we kind of combine all of our behavioral and transa transactional customer data and we use an LLM to prompt that, that raw data and develop a really like rich customer profile mm -hmm. that can, you know, that, that outlines, you know, dietary preferences, lifestyle preferences, demographic information. And we use that to run through several different uh, so that's the LL that's the LLM part of AI, right. and then we run that through a bunch of agents, mer oh. what we call merch agents, to say, okay, well, oh. if this is what this person is like, here's the type of product they would like, and then you tie that type of product to actual SKUs, wow. and then you connect that SKU to actual like products in our stores, and then you layer in your preferences. So if you're a vegetarian, then we're not going to show you that meat version. We're gonna like it's all those things. AI powers all of that. It's different types of AI. It's LLMs. It's agentic. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, uh, uh, content creation on the fly. So like uh, image generation that's automatically created uh, on the go. So I mean, I like s just our personalization efforts uses like four or five different types of AI. Um, and I mean, I think there's a little bit of hype in there, obviously, like agentic AI. We were that's just, you know, different uh, like AI talking to each other and hand off, hand off, hand off. Right. We've been doing that for some time. We now call it agentic. Right. Acting on its own. Uh, as yeah, agent. acting on its own or connecting the dots between mm -hmm. a bunch of different, you know, algorithms and uh, and 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 whatnot. But uh, I mean, I think yeah, like that kind of stuff is so interesting to me. We're lucky because we have a really composable, uh, built-in house technology infrastructure. So like I was I was talking about on stage earlier, like OpenAI announces they're doing you know uh, commerce with Shopify. The reality mm -hmm. is, yeah. if you actually read into it and you go to their website and you look at all the documentation, anyone 
can launch commerce mm-hmm. on those platforms. They launched with Etsy. Mm-hmm. They've given you know everyone access to ACP. If you've got the right infrastructure, if you've got the right APIs and product feeds, you can just go. You can mm-hmm. go and build your use cases and, and start doing that too, which is what we're doing. And I think it is. having that mm-hmm. flexibility, yeah, for sure. So I think yeah, we got you know we're, we've got a few use cases of like turning recipes into carts. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, buying our apparel and beauty right then and there. Uh, you know, um, so I think there's like a lot that we can test. You know, we we, we like to place a lot of bets. We never go. We never do massive bets. Like we ne- we didn't build a massive CFC before we launched online grocery. Okay. We you know we we very quickly as soon as we could got out of monoliths you know mm-hmm. to run our business as, as much as we can have extensibility and flexibility in our systems so that we can experiment. I remember when like remember when the metaverse came out and we were all yeah. like metaverse is the oh future. Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. yeah we dipped our toe in yeah. that but not too deep. We didn't right. jump in and yeah. that's why, you know, we weren't kind of left in. And <laughs> <laughs> let's, no one's buying groceries in the metaverse yet, yeah. as far as I know. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that's like super that's interesting to that's me. That's awesome. Wow, great. Well, Good Lauren, stuff. thank you so much for spending the time yeah, with us today, exactly. for sharing with our audience. I mean, you are so much further ahead in with that strategy, I think, than a lot of the people that we've been hearing from at this show. So it's really a testament to how people should be thinking about their strategies for especially AI based search. Oh yeah. Um, and you don't need much too, by yeah. the way. We have a team of like ten people in AI. Wow. Uh, they're like AI. half more than half of them are co ops. Okay. So uh, yeah. it can be done with very little. Uh, you just gotta enable. So well yeah. That you it there you have it. You heard it here <laughs> first is right. You Lauren, don't need to ask for resources. Lauren's going to have her own show pretty soon. <laughs> She's got it no. down. I've uh, got enough. I've well, got enough. Yeah. Big, <laughs> big thank you again thank to you. Lauren, to the Vision Group for helping us bring you all of our coverage here from Grocery Shop. Stay tuned for more. And until our next interview. Be careful out there. <laughs>